Hello. In this video, we are going to just do some logistics in terms of setting up assignment one. Now, some of the things I'm doing here in terms of this, this initial setup is to help deal with some programming challenges that I predict you might run into down the line. So we're actually doing a number of things here which might not be totally clear yet, but the hopes is that with this initial framework, you're going to be able to achieve some of those more complex things you're going to decide to do in this assignment. So. Here's a completed example already, which I'm going to go and recode in a second. And just to explain what we're doing is we're essentially going to set up our first assignment such that it runs out of a function. So we haven't spent a lot of time talking about functions yet, but what a function is, it's a small section of code that can be called upon. So most of our programs to this point have been programs where, where it's just code that runs straight down, right from along the left edge side of the screen. So there's no kind of separation of our code. We're going to write it all in what's called a game function. And what this will allow us to do is to manage situations such as if in your game you want to terminate the game at some point prematurely. So if you're playing a game where the character might die or something like that and you want to end the game, it's going to make it a lot easier. Or things like wanting to play again and repeat the game. It makes kind of reading and understanding the code a little easier. And with that in mind, let's dive in. So I'm going to make a new Python file, and I'm going to call this assignment1pm. There we go. And I'm just going to now minimize this and get this out of the way. So again, it's good to have to start your name, Paul Miskew, the date, 10-14-2016, and a description. Don't worry about putting too much in here right now because your description is going to change based on where this assignment takes you. So what we've learned at this point is that if I run a program in Python, and I'm going to print two lines, I'm going to print start program and end program. What Python, when I, when I compile and run a program, it, we need to know where to start. And what we do in Python to know where to start is we essentially look at the first thing we find that is not indented. Because Python is an indent based language, meaning that the way we distinguish between different sections of code is we use indentation. So when I when I look at a program, I see the first thing I see that is not indented is this print, so it prints start program and then it prints end program. So what we can do is we can think about this. If I'm just going to put a comment here and a whole bunch of stars, I like to break up my code like this somehow. Why don't I zoom this in just a little bit here? Maybe that's a little better. And we're going to call this main code section. Now, there is a way to make a main function in Python, but we won't get into that. So I'm going to come up above here, and I'm going to call this section up here my functions. So these, this is a location where I'm going to write my own functions that I can call upon inside this, this file. The way I define a function is I use the word def. That's short form for definition. And then I give the name of my function. So my function is going to be called game, and then I put a colon to indicate. So now I know they said the first non-indented piece of code is where we start, but because this has the word def in front of it, or that, that reserved word, the program knows not to start there. So it's going to look for the first situation where we don't see the word def. So it's going to come down and, nope, we don't start there. Oh, we're going to start right here. And so what happens, and you see how when I hit enter, it, it went right in there? What happens is any code inside this function now needs to be indented. So if I do print game starting, and I run this program, it's still going to print start program, end program, because though we have this definition, this is where the program starts, and I've never actually invoked that method. So now that I've made this definition up there, I can invoke it. So I'm just going to come down here and go game, like this. So what happens is when I run my program, it's going to come down here, it's going to print start program, it's going to invoke the game method, meaning it's going to jump up to here, and then it's going to come down here, it's going to print game starting and just to we're just add some comments here this is the end of the game function so when it gets to the end of the game function it's going to jump back down to where it was called from and then print end program so I'm going to end up with start program game starting end program so let's take this opportunity and let's just set up um, a typical kind of situation that you might run into in this first assignment 
So a lot of students will do something that is a multiple choice type game, or very similarly, they'll have a game where there'll be a bunch of options in terms of choosing which direction to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a multiple choice question, how you might kind of set that up. So I'm going to say print, and I'm going to say print, what color is the sky? And then I'm going to put on each line possible answers. A, red, B, blue, C, green. Okay. So what this does now is I'm going to say game starting, and then it's going to print out what color is the sky and give me my three options. So now I'm going to take my input. So I'm going to say answer equals input. And I like to prompt the user so they know that they're actually required to take an input. And if I run this now, there's a start. What color is the sky? Gives me my three options, and I can type in an answer here. So I could put in, for example, A, program ends. Now a couple things I want to do just to kind of good practices. We're going to actually declare all our variables at the top. So I'm going to put my variables up here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use a variable called ants. It's going to have an empty string in it. This will keep track, store the user's answers. Now I don't have to do this, but I like to do this. And the reason why I like to do this is, again, we work with really small code segments. When this code becomes really long, it becomes really easy then to manage my variables and know what variables I have and, and kind of what those values are being set to. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually check if they got it right or not. So we're going to assume that the answer is B, recognizing that you could have a red sky given the certain situation. But let's assume that the answer is B. And the way we do that is we use what's called an if statement conditional statement. So we say if, and then we make what's called a Boolean expression. So I want to check that answer is equivalent to B. And the temptation might be to do something like this, which from a math perspective makes sense because this in math class means, you know, answers B. But the problem is in computer science, this means take the value of B and put it into answer. So we need a different, a slightly different notation to, to compare something the same versus assign a value. So remember, this is called an assignment statement, but I don't want to assign answer the value B, I just want to see if they're the same. And to do that, I use two equal signs, and that means equivalent. So if answer is equivalent to B, then I'm going to print, that is correct. So if I run my program now, it says, what color is the sky? I put B, and it gets correct. If I run it again, it says, what color is the sky? I put A. It ends the program. Now I probably want some sort of feedback if the user doesn't enter. So I can actually attach to an if statement an else structure. And this means if this is not true, always do this. So I'm going to print incorrect. So this is the code block here for the if statement. This is the code block for if statement. That's really important. This is the code block for else statement. I can put as much code inside here as long as it's tabbed in, and that code will only run provided that this condition is true. Now perhaps in my game I want to keep track of every time you get a question right you get some sort of point. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to declare a variable called points. And I'm going to set it to zero initially. This is going to store the number of points the user has. And so if they get the question right, I'm going to come down here and say points equals points plus one. So every time they get a question right, they're going to get one point. So this is called a self-referencing assignment statement because I'm taking whatever current value is in points and I'm adding one to it. So if I run this now, what color is the sky? I can put C and it says incorrect. Now let's just take a last little minute and let's clean, make this look a little nicer with our escape codes. I can use escape codes and I can clean this up by doing a couple things. Um, first thing I'm going to do, not escape code wise, I'm going to add a bunch of stars just because I like the look of that. And then I want this to be, I want an extra space. I want a space between this starred line and this. So I'm going to put a backslash n at the start of this. I'm going to put a backslash n at the end of it. So this is going to be now game starting with a bunch of stars, space, what color is the sky, an extra line. And I'm going to tab each of these in. So using the escape code backslash t. And then in the last one, I'm going to add a new line. So if I run this now, 
looks a little nicer now. So what color? So game starting. We have some space. What color is the sky? We have some space. And now I can take my input. I put A. Well, I want to put a couple backslash ends here as well just to kind of make it look a little nicer. Again, this is something you can play with. It's a fun way to play with your escape codes to make sure you understand how they work. So if I wanted a second question, now let's take another second and make a second question here. For all intents and purposes, I could just take this code exactly and I could copy it and I could paste this code and then just change the values in it. Watch what happened here. When I paste this code, it went, it's inside the else block, so I have to bring this all back. So one way to quickly untap things is you can highlight the code and then if you press shift tab, it's going to pull it back in line for us. So maybe the other question is, um, what is the first element in the periodic table? And maybe we're going to say, let's make the answer here. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Carbon. Maybe nitrogen. So now the answer, the answer is A. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to change my conditional statement to A. So I hope so. If we run this now, we're going to get what color is the sky? I'm going to say B. And then I get what is the first element in the periodic table? I'm going to say A. And then my program. Now you could output your point value or something like that. So I hope this video helped. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.